David Tamati, Vice Chairman of the Department of Urology and Chief of Robotics at Mount Sinai Medical Center. And Dr. Mark Siegel is with us this morning. There he is in Dallas, Texas. Dr. Siegel is Associate Professor of Medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center and author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness of Health. And Dr. Siegel, you're in uh, Dallas because you really had a meaningful adventure in Texas this weekend, didn't you? Unbelievable. I was in Palo Dura Canyon State Park with the veterans, wounded warriors that were going on a bicycle ride, mountain biking with President Bush, who was literally standing up on a hill looking over them, encouraging them on. And he was down with them, helping amputees up the hill. And he was clearly part of them. It was a deeply stirring experience, Eric, about mind over matter, about veterans who have been wounded, trying to get back to society, to regain the new normal, overcoming post-traumatic stress, amputation, traumatic brain injury. To be part of that was so moving to me. And, and it's clearly an inspiration. And it's helping the veterans to recover is the main thing. You know, and it shows such a caring and dedication by the former president that he's out there on his bike. We all know how he loves uh, riding his bike and, and being involved in this issue. And it is an issue that, that really should be near and dear, not just to the president's heart, uh, but to all of us in this country, honoring U.S. military veterans injured in Iraq and Afghanistan. Let's take a look as Dr. Siegel goes along for the ride. Heroes in the wars, severely wounded, and heroes again, as they courageously return to civilian life, invited by President George W. Bush, deeply touched by his friendship. You know, he feels the burden uh, of the soldiers that have been wounded in this war. President Bush is attempting to help the veterans to heal. It's an opportunity for, uh, for me to say to our vets, uh, I care for you, thank you, I honor you. It's a way to herald the groups that support the vets. A lot of these uh, men and women were severely wounded. All the 20 vets have faced severe challenges. Among the toughest and most common are traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. The lowest point for me was definitely in the night that I wanted to commit suicide. Um, there's a, there was a lot of survivor's guilt. Uh, having an event like this to help with the recovery, and, and you know whether it be at the beginning or the end of it, it's just kind of a, this is what you're working towards. Major Daniel Gade lost his leg in Iraq, and since that fateful day, he has gained a Ph.D. and now teaches at West Point. Gade is living proof of mind over matter. But I don't feel disabled because I, my brain works fine, my hands work fine, um, you know, my wife still loves me, so I don't consider myself disabled. I just consider myself like, eh, it's just inconvenienced. Looking good! Very good! A few months away from his 66th birthday, the amazingly fit former president leads by example on a quest to get Americans fitter. It's a way to kind of encourage people to exercise. I'm now on Medicare, or at least Medicare eligible. You look in great shape to me. I feel pretty good fit, pretty fit. And, uh, and if I can stay fit, others can stay fit. He's now eligible for Medicare. He's out there riding the bike. I mean, doctor, what an amazing experience. What a great cause. It brings us to the very important topic that should be meaningful to all of us, and that is helping wounded veterans, right? Absolutely, Eric. You know, the, the, there's two main issues here, which is the veterans are actually helping each other. They're working together. I witnessed that, how they were literally helping each other. Team Melissa, Team Dan, you saw, you saw Dan there on the, on the buildup. I mean, they're helping each other up the hill, back to society, helping them get jobs. But let's face it, some of these things can't be overcome, like traumatic brain injury. Over 200,000 people have that. Over 100,000 post-traumatic stress disorder. It's very, very hard. You know, M Major Dan is working as a professor at West Point and is still on active duty, but a lot of people are not on active duty. So there's a lot of problems, and we need to shed more of a spotlight on this because it's a very difficult problem. These are heroes. They come back. They're even more heroic if they can get back into society. The second issue here is the issue of fitness. And President Bush and I were talking about this. You know, if the elderly would actually exercise like this, not necessarily go on mountain bike rides like this, but as he says to me, even 30 minutes a day of regular exercise, we could cut down on the obesity epidemic. Maybe we would less use Medicare less, stop overusing Medicare. I mean, we are such a sedentary society, and I believe he's a role model for getting back on your feet, doing that exercise, and really having a positive outcome. So there's two issues. One is veterans' health, which is deeply important, and the other is all of our health here in America and how we're not paying enough attention to it. Wow, he really is a role model on that. No doubt about that. And I want to pick up now with Dr. Samadhi about the veterans' issue. Um, one of the, we saw that heroic, uh, I thought it was so impressive when 
the, the, the veteran who's, who lost his leg. He just called it an inconvenience. But yeah. also Dr. Siegel pointed out, Dr. Samadhi, that PTSD is something that's not as easy to kind of make that transition back into the new normal. Um, and I think we, we sort of chatted about it earlier, and it's, it is that transition that's so important. Of course, you have the families waiting at the, air, at the airport, yeah. so happy to have their loved one home, but you can't just go from the, the war field to you know, sitting in the family den watching movies. Yes, absolutely, and that's a really good point. Let me just say first that this is really, truly an inspirational story and shows how committed we are as a country behind all these vets. These are the ones that have risked their lives to make us all you know, safe and sound, and these are true champions. They're our heroes, and we salute them. And for them to see, to have this kind of uh, collaboration as a teamwork, starting from the President Bush to the rest of the country, we're all behind you. America is safe, and the spirit is young and healthy. And, and this is really a great awareness. So I congratulate also Dr. Siegel for bringing this to the attention of the rest of the country. Now, when, what happens is when they come back, they really, the family are waiting for them at the airport. So they go from that the war zone straight to their living room. And that's a big problem because PTSD actually exists in about 30% of our vets, men and women out there. And it's a true psychological issues. There's depression involved, the nightmares and flashbacks of the war zone. This has resulted to even suicidal ideation. So we need to deal with this. Most of the time, Eric, we are giving like this antidepressant or antipsychotics. We are masking the symptoms, but we are not dealing with the actual problem. And I think, as we discussed earlier, Arthur, we need to have a transition, so almost like a therapy in between before really delivering them to the family. And I think as a result of awareness like this, hopefully there would be enough attention and fundings to really take care of our people who put in their lives at risk. The other issue that you see over here is 62 miles, 100K of bike ride with some of the people that have lost their organs, arms, legs. And this is another credit to the technology. As you know, I deal with robotic surgery for prostate cancer, and I'm fascinated by these robotic arms and legs out there. Look at what has happened over the last 30 years. Now you have carbon fibers, you have titaniums, microprocessor in the joints that can really give you the full range of motions. To go through this kind of ride with these prostheses is revolution. We talk about Bluetooth, not the cell phone, but if you have two prostheses in your legs, the right uh, prosthesis and the left one are communicating through Bluetooth technology, it's just incredible to see how these guys are able to go through this challenge and come back victorious. That, that's absolutely amazing. I mean, uh, Do Dr. Siegel, Dr. Samadhi just mentioned uh, the medical advances. You certainly must have been inspired by doing this, as well as the message from former President Bush for all of us to get on our bikes. Well, you know, President Bush is inspirational on a personal basis. He congratulated me when I interviewed him last night that I was toughing it out. But it isn't me that mo matters most. It's the veterans. David's point about technology is totally right. But at the end of the day, Major D Dan was still riding with one leg. He's bicycling with one leg. The other leg, because his amputation was so high up, he couldn't use his artificial leg on the bike. So the technology is advancing tremendously, but they still have a, a big disadvantage. But keep in mind, Eric, it's only 1,600 amputees. And D David's other point, over 200,000 traumatic brain injury and over 100,000 PTSD. You know, David was talking about suicidal ideation. I got to tell you, at the dinner we had there, one of the vets stood up and said, six weeks ago, I was about to commit suicide, mm -hmm. he said. But I was talked out of it, and now I'm here at this dinner getting inspiration. And President Bush is not just doing this. He's part of them. I saw him off camera, nobody watching him. He's very comfortable with them. He's one of them. And that's one of the biggest keys, especially at a time when we're talking about likability. On a personal level, he really, really inspires the vets. You know, Dr. Siegel, uh, uh, it must have been so inspiring for you. You talk about the emotion. I mean, what was it like? to be there with them, riding along, not just the former president, but, but all these guys who've suffered so much. You know, yesterday, I actually ended up in the lead group, his, which is Army Active, and they were literally greased down, and they were the scout group, and I rode behind them, and they actually came to a rest stop. They're thinking, oh, Dr. Siegel, he's in the back, and suddenly they saw me, and I was still with them, and they were so impressed, but it wasn't about me. It was about them functioning as a group them working together as a group. And then again, behind them was Team Dan and Team Melissa. And again, Team Dan, they're helping him up the hills that he couldn't make because of the one leg on a bicycle. But he didn't feel bad about that. They didn't feel bad about that. It was almost as if they were back out in combat. 
working together. I could see it in their minds that they were still a human in combat. I don't know if our viewers understand how amazing our armed services are in that way. They work together as a unit selflessly, loving each other, helping each other up the hills, and up the hill, the biggest hill, back to normal life. Well, God bless them. What a great event, Dr. Siegel and Dr. Samadhi. Just an uh, amazing experience. Uh, and, and really important, Dr. Siegel, we'll talk more next week when you come back, is how we help uh, the veterans. And here's where you can do that. It's the Bush Center Warrior 100K Ride. You can go on the internet. There it is. Just log on to www.w100k.com. 100k.com for the video and the stories. Such an inspirational cause. Something that all of us around the country can help. This is such a crucial uh, uh, cause that's just amazing. Dr. Siegel, Dr. Samadhi.